Alright guys, welcome to your 36 biology video and in this video I want to start talking to you guys about the Krebs cycle. Now in the last video what I did is I showed you guys how peruvic acid, which was the ending molecule we had after glycosis, becomes acetyl-CoA because we need the molecule acetyl-CoA to enter the Krebs cycle. And if you don't know how, you know, peruvic acid becomes acetyl-CoA, please watch the last video. Now the reason that I didn't include that in this video is because the Krebs cycle, as the name implies, it's a chemical process that repeats itself in a cycle. Now the last video was kind of a preparation intermediate stage between glycosis and the Krebs cycle. Some people include that preparation of, you know, the peruvic acid into the Krebs cycle, but I like to keep them separate. If, you know, you have that preparation stage in the Krebs cycle, that's okay whatever floats your boat. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with acetyl-CoA. So this is what we left the last tutorial with, acetyl-CoA, and what this does is the very first step in the Krebs cycle, I might as well write step one over here. By the way, they, there are eight steps in case you were wondering. What happens is this is a two carbon molecule, two carbon acetyl-CoA. And what this does is it combines with a four carbon molecule. So I'll just write four carbon molecule. And the four carbon molecule is called, let me spell it first, O-X-A-L-O acetate. Oxaloacetate, and of course, whenever we have a two carbon molecule and it combines with a four carbon molecule, we end up with a six carbon molecule. And this new and improved six carbon molecule is actually called citrate or citric acid. So that's why, also, aside from the Krebs cycle, some people actually call this the citric acid cycle because that's the most famous molecule in this process. The reason that some people call it the Krebs cycle is because a dude with the name of Krebs was the one who discovered this process. So if you want to call it the citric acid cycle, it's acceptable. Krebs cycle, also acceptable. But the key to take away is in step number one of the Krebs cycle, we start with acetyl-CoA, which was a two carbon molecule. It combines with another four carbon molecule to form citric acid. So now we can go ahead and take that citric acid and enter it into step number two. So step so of course we have citric acid and step number two is actually one of the easier steps because all it does is basically take this molecule citric acid and let me go ahead and draw this molecule see so of course this is a six carbon molecule like we said and Again, there are other things that are gonna be bonded onto this, but I'm only gonna draw the part that I wanna discuss right now. I'll draw it in a different color. And let me go ahead and draw it in green. OH bonded to this carbon, and a hydrogen bonded to this carbon. Now, of course, we have stuff bonded onto here, 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 all around, but step number two is only basically iso, iso I can't say this word, iso, Merization. Basically, this molecule is going to get rearranged. It's not going to have any more atoms added to it. It's not going to have any atoms, you know, taken away from it. Basically, what's going to happen is this hydrogen is going to switch places with this OH, which is called a hydroxyl group, and we get a new molecule, which looks like this. Again, our carbon backbone right here, which is five carbons and your sixth one is attached to this middle one, that doesn't change. However, you see how this oxygen or this uh, hydroxyl group is in the middle right here? This is actually gonna go to your fourth carbon. So that OH goes down here and your hydrogen goes up here. So basically this and this change place. So just to recap one last time, that's all step number two is. A molecule becomes an isomer of itself, or in other words, its molecules get rearranged. So the original is called citrate or citric acid. And again, like I said, other molecules are going to be, or other atoms are going to be bonded onto these carbons, but I didn't want to confuse you guys and write out the entire citric acid structure. And the important thing is these other molecules don't change. The only part that changes are these molecules right here, this hydroxyl group, which is OH and this hydrogen right here, they pretty much change places. 
Now the last thing I want to say is that this new molecule is no longer called citric acid, it's called isocitrate. So at the end of step number two, we have a molecule called isocitrate, and its structure is this right here with a couple other hydrogens and oxygens bonded onto it. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with isocitrate, and we take that molecule into step number three of the Krebs cycle.